Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. And today I have a very special guest, Shirley. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for being here, Shirley. Hi, Karen. <laughs> yeah. So Shirley, what's your sort of one minute introduction about what you do? Uh, my name is Shirley. I'm a professor in the school of ITWE in the University of Queensland. I'm teaching courses of uh, databases, machine learning, and uh, also for cloud computing, whatever data science courses. Oh, sounds very awesome. So we really want to know how Shirley got to where he is today. <laughs> so we're going to start right at the beginning. So Shirley, what kind of child were you like growing up? I have a, a, a very hardship life in oh. my childhood. And uh, when I teach my students, uh, I said that when I was a boy, a young child, uh, I look at everything if it is uh, edible. <laughs> <laughs> now I ask my student to look at everything if it is uh, computable. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Wow, so how come your childhood was um, so hard? Was it because you were very poor at the time? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I, in 1950s, I was, uh, I, I was born in 1950s, so you know that area in yeah. China. Everything must have a coupon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for rice, for clothes, for yeah. soap, for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, cool. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit more about like, what kind of child were you? Were you, like, were you a very naughty child? Were you very yeah, I think I'm an extremely uh, naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> I remember I climbed the trees all the time. Once my mom come Mm, home. I was uh, in the top of the tree. I didn't <laughs> want my mom save me. Then I just uh, hiding from the leaves of the tree. Yeah. And uh, my mom just head down all the time. But when I went home, back to home, my mom was just waiting for me, say, how dare you? Why you are climbing <laughs> on the top of the tree? I said, oh, I, I didn't know you saw me. Yeah. <laughs> my mom said, if I saw you, you will fall off. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Your yeah. mom is smarter than you realize then. Yeah, 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 yeah. actually, she protected me. <laughs> <laughs> didn't just shout at me. Yeah, oh, that's quite nice. And then tell me more about how you sort of fit in the school environment. Were you someone who loved to study? Were you more sporty? Or? Yeah, uh, uh, actually, I... I didn't choose uh, my profession, I didn't choose anything. It's just uh, in my generation, everything is an opportunity, you have to compete. Yeah. And uh, my father was a professor in the university, so that's his job, and <laughs> I naturally <laughs> took uh, as a university lecturer first. Oh. I didn't even thought about anything. My Childhood was in the university. I grew up in university and everything is in the university in my lifetime. Wow, damn. <laughs> and so that, that means you're probably very good at academics, right? Because you don't understand something, you just ask your parents, right? Not, not really not. academic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to <a> survive. Oh, <laughs> and what kind of, um, what sort of professor was your dad? In what field? Oh, my, my father it was the professor in the sensors, you know, electronic device, oh, the sensors. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so electronic cool. device to sensing the, provide the electronic signals for. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah. did you ever see that and be like, oh, I want to be just like dad. I want to do sensors as well. Was that Oh, uh, yeah. When I was uh, choosing a, what's called a, a discipline. Yeah. I I asked my father what is the most advanced area in the world now, in, I mean in, in electronics, yeah. he said computer science, wow. and then I chose computer science. Wow, so easy. Yeah. And what about your mom? Did she say you wanted to do something else? Did she give you any No, my mom, or I, I feel in my mom's eyes yeah. or in her mind, she always believed that I'm the best in the world. Oh, that's so sweet. I said, no, no, I'm very <laughs> poor. I, I, I don't know this, I don't know that. My mom said, no, 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 you are excellent. You must believe yourself. I know you. Oh, so, so encouraging. whenever I took an exam, I don't want to fail Your mom. my mom. <laughs> she wow. always believed I'm the best. So yeah. what I can do? I yeah. have to live up for So the expectation. Yeah. Wow, that's such a big <laughs> expectation. 
But yeah, yeah good on your mum for cultivating that self -belief. She believed me in her heart. Yeah. That's my trouble. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel I'm excellent, I'm good at it. Wow. So can yeah. you tell me more about your grades, Shirley? Were you like the top 1% or like... How come your mom so strongly believed? Was it like no, when I you don't think I'm good at right? so anything. Really? I just, uh, how can I say, studying very hard. Yeah. But uh, in my generation, I'm graduating in 1982, and mm. uh, I'm studying my university. We call the 77 generation or the entry because oh. Chairman Mao died yeah. in 1976. 1977, the Gaokao, the yeah. roster entry, started uh, oh, recruiting man. the first uh, <laughs> entry <laughs> student after Cultural Revolution. Yeah. So, in my time, we probably 1% success yeah. rate. Wow. Or, or 3 or, or 4%. Yeah. yeah. And did you get a very good score for your Gaokao? Um, yeah, I think interest. so. Yeah, you yeah. Did? I think I was uh, one of the best uh, in our area. Wow! And so, for a lot of students watching this, how does one become very mm -hmm. good at study? How does one get really top grades? What was your sort of study method? Uh, I think uh, it's just uh, what you want. Oh. In my time, I was working as uh, you know the 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 high school students sent to countryside. I yeah. work very hard in the oh. countryside. To go to university was yeah. the only chance I can live there. Yeah. And then I must study hard. Yeah. I must memorize everything. I must reason out everything. Even the textbook wasn't uh, available. So oh, it wow. was a luxury if you can borrow some book. <laughs> <laughs> because in Cultural Revolution, <laughs> the, yeah, everything nothing. stopped. Yeah. yeah, wow. And how many hours a day did you spend studying? Were you doing like 12 hour days? Uh, I. Actually, before the uh, exam, I think I, it's about 12 or 14 hours every day. Wow. It's not a study. Yeah. I work for nearly 10 hours yeah. in, the, in the, what's called the paddle field. Yeah. And then when I finish this, the work, cooking the meal and yeah. then start. Wow. Study up to the middle of the night and get up in the early morning. Yeah, oh. but before that, I went back home and uh, has the concentrated for three months. Yeah. And then before exam, I have to go back to the countryside to yeah. take exam. Yeah. Wow, wow. It's a very, it's very hard. Very, very hard time. <laughs> yeah, did you ever like complain about your life? Like, oh my gosh, no, why is no, my no. life so hard, man? No, no, no. At that time, we were, we were what's called the, the, the put explosive to the rocks, Ooh. blow the rocks yeah. and uh, to, to convert them into the paddy field. Oh, yeah. The TTN, like the, you know, the, the oh, gliders, yeah, the yeah. field. And then I told the other people in my, in my group, I said, how about I treat my time with you by filling the explosive powders? Ooh. Because uh, every one of us must be responsible to draw to the holes yeah. to, to put in the explosive powder in. Yeah. So they will do the draining. Yeah. And uh, then I will be responsible to put uh, explosive uh, powders uh. into there <laughs> and uh, also take care of uh, the uh, lightning and also yeah. take care if it is uh, failed, uh, it's not explosive. Uh, it, not if there is no explosion, I have to go back to fix it. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, did yeah. you? So I said, uh, how about that? Everybody say, oh yes, yes. Oh. I end up with doing that for everyone, <laughs> and then they draw the the yeah. hole for me. Yeah. Wow, you're pretty smart as a kid, huh? Uh, yeah. It's not smart. I I know what I want. I just yeah. uh, put my time in. Yeah. Yeah. And why did you make effort? And why did you decide that putting the explosive powers was a better job than doing the drilling? Uh, because I get uh, uh, six hours or more yeah. by studying. Oh, so it, cause I it takes I buy less... time yeah, from buy time. them. Yeah. Because they did a label for me. Yeah. Putting power in the hole and the lighting is just 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and I get the whole day yeah. <laughs> off. <laughs> Is it because people were scared of doing the explosive parts? Yeah, so it's they dangerous because uh, that explosive, you needed to be very careful. If you 
put a, press it too hard, yeah. it explodes. If you put, put it too lightly, won't explode. it won't explode because there is another light igniter. Yeah. Lui oh. guai. Oh, okay. That would be hard to put into the explosives. Yeah. And uh, then I have to practice for five kilos. It's a five kilos pressure. Yeah. So I have to put Whoa. on the, 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 the weight balancer yeah. and do that and watch if it is a five kilo yeah. <laughs> kilogram. Wow. Yeah, Were you I have ever to scared? do that to practice. Were you ever scared to do that? Of no? course. I'm yeah. very scared. <laughs> but I know what I want. I have to get a time. Yeah. I take a lot of time was a, as an advantage. Yeah. Because I dare to treat my life or even yeah. if I explode. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I got a time. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever have any serious accidents? No, in oh, that okay. area, no. Mm, in my life, it's always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I was actually hit. Uh, Unconsciously in the Riverside uh, Bridge uh, last year. This last time. year, this yeah. time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, about seventh of November last year. Was it a car crash? No, uh, you know the custom house on the yeah. Riverside. There is a small uh, pedestrian crossing yes. near the river, but there is a triangle like that. Yeah. Nobody can see each other on the either side. Oh shit. And a scooter, yeah. very high speed, hit me from back. back. Yeah. Ouch. And then knock me on the Gorgeous. on the ground unconsciously, and my daughter was there, and they called the ambulance. So I was took to the what's called the Mata Hospital, Mata I think. Oh yeah, Mata Hospital. Yeah. But you're okay now? Yeah, yeah. They put me uh, <laughs> CT scan, everything. They they said you are lucky. Your bone is okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the scars here. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow, life's so risky. Yeah, my, my glass was 10 meters away. <laughs> <laughs> my, car, my car key was oh crashed uh, to dismantle. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm so glad you can still laugh about it. Yeah, that was the only accident I had yeah. before, I think. Oh, really? Well, rest of your That's life pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> wow, were you very scared at the time? You didn't feel, you just like, black. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That boy was crying. Yeah. He oh. didn't uh, even know he hit me so easily. <laughs> And he was crying there, and also his girlfriend oh, called no. back to accompany him. Yeah. So I thought, okay, just 19 years old boy, yes, I said, okay, yeah. go home. Yeah, go home, go home. <laughs> I yes, didn't Shirley, even, forgive you. Yeah, chasing him at all, yeah. just to leave Aww. him out. Yeah. yeah. Damn, wow. Okay, so back to terms of university. So what did you choose to study again? I choose uh, computer science because mm -hmm. at that time my parents told me computer science was the most advanced yeah. <laughs> <laughs> courses. But after that, I I never changed my profession. It's the same oh. field for wow. over forty years. Yeah, and so like, do you really enjoy it, or like, have you ever thought of trying other things? No, no. I think uh, the more learning I'm doing, the I'm less confident I have because oh, you yeah. learn more, the more you feel suddenly you, I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. very strange feeling. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. but yeah, that's pretty cool. It always makes you more humble, like the more you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Cool, and so do you want to sort of um, tell like the audience what exactly is computer science? Some people might be like high school and like <laughs> <laughs> thinking about like what should they study? Like should they go for like IT or software engineering or okay, like yeah. why computer science? Uh, first of the thing I think uh, computer is the most sophisticated uh, machines ever created by human, human being. So this is a very complicated machine, but the machine knows nothing on, on, until this kind of we call the, those zeros and the ones. So everything built upon based on the reasoning. So we must uh, respect uh, the, our older generations developed computer science. So in computer science, uh, we look at a computer from inside out. And IT is a look at computer in terms of its applications. So IT or computer science are same thing in two sides. 
from yeah. inside out or from outside the look the system how can system is uh, providing services for people's uh, life i think uh, in computer science we have a lot of different professions like a network Mm -hmm. uh, programming, network architectures, and also multimedia, designing videos, those kind of thing. And also the software engineering to make uh, software products. And also machine learning, artificial intelligence, and uh, databases, uh, data analytics. I don't, there are so many professions. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't even finish. <laughs> That's so true. Cool. And then also tell me, when did you come to Australia and did your master's? Oh, I see. I did a, a master's in University of Queensland and in computer science as well. And then I started a PhD, started a PhD in UQ and finished a PhD in QUT. <laughs> uh, because I, before I finish my PhD in UQ, I got a job as a lecturer in QUT. Yeah. And I transferred my PhD to QUT and I finished there. And uh, all the time I got a scholarship. And, uh, oh, so, that's very good. Yeah, it's a research degree by yeah, scholarship. That's yeah. cool. And how did you decide that you wanted to do a PhD? Why not exit to industry? Oh, I don't even thought about it. <laughs> I thought it's uh, just the uh, next stage yeah. of my master degree. <laughs> when I first started, uh, the, my professor, Shell uh, Nyson, he was a professor in UQ computer science. He said, uh, do you want to do a PhD? I, I said, uh, I, I don't know I'm qualified or not. <laughs> if should I do a master degree first? Then he said, okay, I gave you a scholarship. You start a master. Let's see if you can continue. Wow. <laughs> I, I never thought about that and then continue yeah. after that. Damn. And what is the enjoyment of like learning and being a student? Because um, I did a four year degree, but like after three years, I'm like, I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to graduate. But uh, like, you stayed for so long. I think uh, it's a mixture of uh, curiosity and uh, your life career. A yeah. uh, mixture means I do have a curiosity, so many complicated things, how that thing's made, how it works. I want to know exactly what it works, yeah. how. And another thing is if I choose this profession, I have to be good at it yeah. and then keep learning. And uh, particularly computer science is a very difficult uh, a prof uh, discipline because it's changing all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and also the IT projects, uh, the failure rate of IT projects is almost 75%. Wow. Even now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know why? No. <laughs> <laughs> because the technology is changing all the time. Oh. And also, secondly, nowadays every software is produced by hundreds People. of even thousands of components yeah. and some of the components are open sourced or supplied by middleware by some companies and the different software have a different versioning and uh, in working together yeah. sometimes you you put them together it doesn't work yeah and the thirdly it is uh, uh, interaction or communication between the developer and the and the user if you produce a system to end the user, they say that that is not what I want. Yeah, that's And common. they change their yeah. ideas all the time. When you finish the developing of the system, they feel it is already not good enough. Yeah. So the changing environment, the changing technology, complexity of the computing components yeah. make this whole profession so difficult, so challenging. Yeah. I have to learn from my kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I guess that's what makes it so interesting, right? Yeah, also you have to have a lifelong learning. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool. Nice. And then, so I guess uh, after doing the PhD, then becoming a professor was a very natural decision, right? Yeah, I didn't have a choice if you want to work <laughs> in the university, right? Yeah. yeah and you have, have you... to get a PhD, you have to get a promotion from 
associate lecturer, lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, professor. Yeah, tell me, tell me through. So you start as a um, PhD student, and then yeah. um, what is the next one, and how long does uh, each stage roughly take? When you take? finish PhD, you can do a post, post, yeah, post doctor. Doctorate. Yeah, post doctor is a very much continuation of your PhD topic. And then you can have more publications, establish also the relationship with those professors and get experience in other universities and to be independent as a leader of your research if you are a postdoc. Yeah. Yeah. After that, then you start either research only or academia in the research and the teaching. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then I started with the PhD and the lecture and the research and the teaching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And how did you decide that you also want to do teaching, not just the full research? Uh, that's when you can get if really If you take deep. a lecturer job, it yeah. is uh, teaching 40%, research 40%, yeah. uh, and 20% for management. And uh, I think I enjoy teaching because of my father, my mother, yeah. <laughs> they are all teachers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My father always telling me, to be a good teacher, you have to be three things. Oh, what are they? One thing, you have to have a good knowledge, yeah. a researcher, sort of. Secondly, you have to uh, educate her. You know how to teach people. Mm. Thirdly, my, my father told me, you have, you have to be a performer. I okay. said, no, I couldn't understand that, but <laughs> I really understand it now. Yeah. Because sometimes I have to teach uh, 600 students yeah. in Albert Smith's uh, lecture yeah. theater. I have to teach twice because Albert Smith only took 500 people. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if I'm telling the student a joke, yeah. I have to <laughs> pretend to be out next time, <laughs> twice a week. Yeah. And uh, every time I must be very energetic yeah. to tell the students story, asking them questions. Yeah. And the second time is very hard yeah, because is. you tell the same joke already. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe the next year is even harder if you're telling the same joke year after year. Yeah, yeah. that's why I said it's good to be a performer, to energetically to tell the students yeah. how much your passion, you believe this. Yeah. First time it's okay, second time you have to perform. Oh, that is so true. Yeah. yeah, and so what is the day in the life of being professor? Like, you know, what time, like, because I work a nine to five job and I don't know if be teaching is... I never change my job in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So but what are the blocks? Do you just have like, you know, two hours of teaching and then you can have three hours of doing whatever and then uh, Supervising time? students, mm. research students, capstone project students, uh, master PhD students, uh, internship and also summer projects, <laughs> a lot of wow. things going on. And uh, I have to read the students' report proposals very yeah. quickly. Yeah. And oh. I also do the journal editing, reviewing for conferences, organizing conferences. A lot of things you have to be, how can I say, multitasking at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Wow, so do you ever have a time when you're not so busy or are you always busy? Always busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, our profession is uh, so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but big holidays, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I have good. holiday every year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Cool. And so wondering, like, what is your research interest and sort of how did you cultivate your own research interest? Uh, I think uh, it's my career and also I I think I needed to prove my value in my life yeah. and uh, more than 10 years ago I remember I was a little bit uh, how can I say lost uh, yeah. in my development and I don't know what I'm doing at that time I was a, a social professor yeah. I asked myself will I am going to be a, ever a professor in UQ or not I was wondering, but lucky enough, we have a, we call the sabbatical leave. Oh, very nice. Sabbatical leave means every three years you are, are planning for a leave to recharge your knowledge somewhere yeah. in the world. <laughs> That's a good thing for yeah. academic. And then, then I applied for uh, $20,000 mm. and asked the 
two questions during half a year around the dozens of countries oh. in the world. I go to top universities wow. and in European in United States asking only two questions. <laughs> Firstly, what you are doing? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, why you are choosing this topic? Oh, I want to fix uh, my, yeah. my career development to be outstanding. Because yeah. in Australia, if you are, want to promote to professorship, you need to have a leadership, you have to be outstanding. And that outstanding is yeah. defined as an international outstanding. Wow, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have to show that, demonstrate that before you can be promoted. Yeah. So I needed to learn from those professors in the world yeah. and in the top universities. That's why. Wow. So did that become your research project? That's why you were able to get the money for it? Or? Yeah, that's the solution of my two questions. Yeah. My head of school said, uh, you, you, uh, you all have a very expensive trip. Yeah. <laughs> Spend $20,000, <laughs> ask the two questions. <laughs> I said, uh, how about I tell you what I is gaining, what yeah. I have? I said, the answer is really good. I feel yeah. I changed myself. Wow, and how long was that trip? Was it for a year? It was half a year. Half a year. Several months in Europe, several months yeah. in the United States. I, drive, I hired a car, drive 7,000 kilometers. Yeah in East and West uh, in, uh, yeah. in uh, United States universities so went around. Oh, that's cool. And did you publish the findings? I submitted my sabbatical leave report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three points. Yeah. That's why I said I changed myself. Yeah. Firstly, you got to do something which is very useful. Yeah. Change people's life. Yeah. Significant change some organizations procedures or yeah. whatever people care yeah. yeah that is the first thing you it's not you think that is a hot yeah. opportunities take feel you can do something about it or yeah. you can get a quick publications no you have to spend a lot of time make sure this things is good for the society yeah has the value yeah that's the first thing i got I asked every one of them, I feel every one of them said this. Yeah. Secondly, you got to create something new, innovation. Yeah. And uh, we called, uh, I, I actually said, uh, create an acronym, <laughs> mm. new concept. Yeah. Because whatever you do, solving that significant problem, come up with a new concept. Yeah. And uh, your algorithms, your idea, your reasoning, everything going to there. And when people mention your name, they know that concept. Yeah. People, when people saw that concept, oh, they know your name is associated with that yeah. concept. So in other words, you've got a hat. Yeah. You've got to have a hat on your head. Yeah, that's true. Thirdly, I think it's uh, outcome. You mm -hmm. must have a significant publication or some demo system or something you can really say this is mine show i show you yeah. or published got a very good citation or something like yeah. that yeah oh, wow damn and i changed it completely myself yeah, then i come back i, I choose the actual topic yeah. which is uh, intensive care unit applied in machine learning oh, ai yeah Wow. Uh, yeah and, and then i asked the a professor in melbourne i said uh, can we do the machine learning AI for ICU patient? Yeah. Because this is a life critical. We yeah. use machine learning so to useful. help them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what he said to me? What? Too Don't hard. do it. Because data, you don't have data, it's difficult to get. Yeah. Doctors will be scared about you. You are going, are you going to replacing them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thirdly, the government doesn't have a regulation. You can use AI for patients. Yeah. Fourthly, it is very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> like he said, don't do it. Yeah. But uh, I thought, uh, well, I feel those four questions, no one of them is about its social impact. Yeah. Nothing about its value to change human life. Yeah. I feel 
I still have a chance yeah. to do it, right? That's so cool. And like, no one I at the time. I started doing did it? that. Yeah. yeah. I, I talked to the Royal Brisbane Hospital directors uh, in ICU, and we applied the ARC grant yeah. successfully. Oh. And then using that money to have a PhD student, the post yeah. and the publications come out after that. Wow. Yeah. Damn. That's, it. that's awesome. And then how long did this whole project take? And then a what project sort of three years. Three years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the PhD students uh, graduating all the time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Damn. And what were the sort of outcomes of the project? What kind of things did you learn? Oh, we are still doing that now. Uh, uh, Queensland University has the new uh, initiative called the UQAI Collaboratory. Mm. Yeah, I still have some funding there to yeah. produce a monitoring system, real-time monitoring, and also to interact with the doctors to do the automatic summarization, predicting yeah. of the mortality, and also recommendation for treatment, and also interact with the doctors. We call the human in the loop. AI oh. with the human in the loop means we interact with doctors. And if doctor is submitting a treatment to the patient, we do high order reasoning yeah. with the doctors yeah. by using a chatbot, oh. uh, artificial intelligence uh, chatting yeah. in, uh, agent. And then we said, okay, why not yeah. do something else, another approach yeah. that is uh, challenging on his uh, treatment approach. Yeah. So what is challenging on his uh, purpose and the significance? And uh, what if it's challenging on his assumptions, yeah. uh, conditions? And how about it's challenging his applicability of uh, that methodology? For example, if our approach is uh, working with uh, HIV disease, yeah. how about uh, applying that approach to COVID-19? Yeah. So we use, we call the high order reasoning, interactive with the patient, uh, or with the doctors. Yeah and then to help that kind of life critical decisions yeah. for doctors. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then all your friends for concerns, like one about the doctors not being on board, did any of them, were any of them very hard to navigate? Yeah, very hard. Uh, yeah. First time when I contacted the director, he yeah. said, uh, stop, <laughs> what are I doing? I said, I'm using AI to predict immortality within the ICU. He said, you telling me people are dying in ICU? Everyone coming to ICU is dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean I should not save him? Yeah. As long as the patient is alive, I will save him. Yeah. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I went back, another talk, and <laughs> we had a coffee together, and then mm -hmm. I Next time I got prepared, I yeah. said, how about a new, fresh, graduated doctors mm -hmm. compared with the very experienced, older doctors? Yeah. If they work within the ICU, uh, their performance would be the same. Yeah. If they follow the book, if they follow the principle we call the evidence-based medicine, he said, no, it's different. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Older doctors have a lot of experiences. Young doc doctors, they know the rule, they know the theory, but they don't have the experiences. Yeah. Then that gave me a chance. I said, how about I use the software to retrieve the similar patient from the database, which is Australia and New Zealand uh, adult patient. Uh, it's called the Anzac APD database, which okay. has uh, millions of uh, ICU patients yeah. recorded in the database. I pick up your current one, find out a similar one in the database. Yeah. I tell one click away and yeah. then show you yeah. what is, uh, was the treatment before and then bring up the old treatment or old experiences to those young doctors. Yeah, that's pretty useful. And then that one worked? Yeah, he said, uh, you can do that. I said, I'm a database scientist, and yeah. that is my job. Yeah. Now he said, okay, how about you talk to other, another doctor who has the more experiences and also handling the data set. Yeah. And then, cool. then we started. 
Yeah, just finding the right research question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how long did it take from like when you had the idea to when you actually started the project? Because you had to uh, convince so many people, get all the funding. How long did that process roughly take? Uh, it depends. Sometimes 10 years, sometimes oh. a few years, sometimes uh, just a few months. <laughs> wow. And how long did it take for this one, for the ICU case? Uh, I think it's about uh, three years before oh. I got the funding. Oh, yeah, because initially we applied for uh, we call the Australia uh, Research Council's linkage project. Mm. LP is called, failed. Mm. And uh, that linkage project, you needed to get a dollar for dollar from industry. Yeah. We mm. didn't get it. And the second time I failed again because uh, I was uh, applying Australian discovery project. And uh, that project is supposedly not to be uh, health or medicine related. It's just yeah. science. Yeah, okay. And then I talk about ICU and I failed again. Yeah. <laughs> and the third time, I said, no, no, no. I'm doing the, uh, what's called the risk prediction data yeah. linkage. Yes. And uh, oh, by the way, we use ICU data as a proof <laughs> of the ideas. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to apply for medicine project. Yeah. That yeah. is uh, totally out of my area. Yeah, I know nothing about. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. learn okay. by mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so how do you sort of give, because um, I think a lot of people, they think of research and it's very hard to get funding. So how, how does one successfully get funding? And you've also got a lot of funding. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. would you like to share? Okay. <laughs> I, I think uh, to get a... Uh, Funding, you, you must know what is a research, and the research means you have to create something new. Yeah. Yeah, we have eight points, <laughs> if you really <laughs> want to know. Yeah. That means what is a problem, problem significance, and the research gap, and yeah. the so research significance, and the challenges, yeah. and the, your methodology, your innovation contribution, and the, where's the data set, and how do you do the evaluation, what is the benchmark of your performance. Yeah. And what is your contribution? You have to understand everything. Yeah. And uh, research has a, a lot of different definitions. Yeah. When I was a lecturer in QUT, the dean of the IT is Dennis Longley, I think. He always say exactly the same thing in every staff meeting. He said, let me define what is a research. <laughs> research is publishing papers. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up PhD students <laughs> and uh, get funding. Yeah, funding <laughs> that is the definition. Yeah. But for me, I think uh, research means uh, you got to have a problem first. Uh, it's a three way of doing research. We will call the problem driven research. You yeah. solve a problem. Secondly, methodology driven research. That is, uh, you improve a method, a methodology to a new stage yeah. and uh, thirdly it's called the data driven you have the data then you adding on the values of that data set yeah yeah so we do either this three yeah, yeah. wow that's cool and am i allowed to ask how much funding you got for the icu project i finished uh, eight arc grants and uh, probably a few millions <laughs> wow <laughs> amazing yeah. Yeah. And also in the very early stages, you said it probably took three years from like ideation to first being able to start the project. How did you like not give up when so many people like are telling you, ah, oh, you can't do it, you shouldn't do it. Like, <laughs> why you not give up? Three okay. years is a very long time. It's like one degree. <laughs> Let me ask you, or okay. the same question was asked in my promotion committee. Yeah. What is your contribution to humanity? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. What things will keep you living on? Yeah. Uh -huh. You feel, how do you prove your value? If you believe this is a good thing for society, if yeah. you, this thing is something in, interesting, important, will bring back the social impact and also prove your value of your life. Yeah. Keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Very encouraging. Three years. Next time <laughs> no, I'll think about that. I don't have that. other options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was asked in the promotion committee, 
they asked me what is uh, a contribution to the humanity, I was yeah. stuck. I yeah. couldn't answer it. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So um, other than health, I also saw that, you know, you do very cool um, data stuff on social media. Yeah. 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 Do you want to share any of them? Um, there was one about the 2014 Queensland election that you used. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had a, a vice chancellor's uh, strategic funding money and then we built up a system to do the prediction of, uh, of the Queensland election. And then we search for the tweeters. Yeah. And I got a postdoc, got a PhD student doing their PhD on this. Perfect. Uh, on the social media analysis. And then we had a system and then we retrieve the tweeters. Yeah. And the tweeters have a lot of information there. Because a lot of people predicting uh, the opinions based on the whatever you said. Yeah. That is untrue. Because if you look at uh, the tweeters, uh, positive tweeters of uh, the Hillary Clinton, their tweeters are much more positive and uh, many more than uh, the Trump. Oh, Trump. okay. Yeah. But if you look at the followers, they say nothing. Yeah. They say nothing, but they are the followers of uh, Trump. And uh, then you just look at the words they are saying. Trump is less popular. Yeah. But if you look at uh, the followers, structures, if you, go to, you said something and a lot of followers say nothing but after him, we should count on the structure, yeah. connectivity of social media. Yeah, that means there is a silent majority there. Yeah. You need to dig out that. I used asking people, what is the number one uh, most popular magazine in Hong Kong? You know? Yeah. Apple Daily. Okay. But if you really go to the street on the reception of a company, yeah. on the train, on the bus, Nobody holding on that. Yeah. <laughs> because that is a gossip. Yeah. Politically not correct if you hold on this. Yeah, it's on yeah. The but uh, it is the most popular magazine. Oh. So you need to dig out a silent majority. Yeah. How do you dig yeah. out the silent majority if they're silent? They're so hard to find. Look at uh, Twitter's followers. Oh, oh, the following. Oh, wow. And also, yeah. how did you come? Not up? just what they say. Yeah. But uh, what they are following. Because the one person said one word, there are 3,000 followers. Yeah. Adding on, adding one, adding one, adding one. Yeah. Then you should count multiple times. Yeah. Wow. And how did you sort of come up with such an interesting idea for research? I think uh, social media needed to be searched. Yeah. I got money because I asked the two questions. Yeah. One question is, there are so many people talking about the UQ on the Twitter. Do the leadership or the university want to know what they are talking about? Yeah. <laughs> now we need a search engine, opinion search yeah. engine, right? Uh, secondly, people talking about the UQ, also talking about the QUT. Oh. Talking about the Melbourne University. Yeah. Do you want to have a comparison? Yeah. And there are international students, uh, there are domestic students. Do yeah. you want to see the comparison between their opinions yeah. over the social media? Talking about the same university by different people, yeah. then you need to analyze in their opinions, right? Google doesn't have an opinion search engine. Yeah, they don't. So we need to do have a search engine okay. to search for opinions. Yeah. Oh, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah, and then what are your thoughts on what kind of people like suit research and suit this academic life and who like, and then how does someone know if they should pursue like a PhD or you yeah. know, become a professor like you? Yeah, I think uh, this is a very important question. I think uh, if you talk about a career, some people like to do the as an engineer. Yeah. Some people want to be a, as a researcher. If you do the engineering, you produce a product. Whatever you do, end of the time, you have to produce that product. 
But for research, you may do something and uh, like a journal paper, you send out and people reject it. Yeah. And then you file your three months work, then you have to do it again, send it to another one. And if you keep doing that 10 times, you may fail 10 times. Yeah. And then you have to pick it up, believe this is a good piece of work <laughs> and do the 11th times. And that means whenever you want to do research, you have to have a very strong heart. Yeah. Believe what you are doing because you are facing the failure all the time. Yeah, oh, very deep. <laughs> and also plus, plus a little bit of technique thing. Yeah. You have to be logical thinking. Yeah. Have to be abstract thinking. Yeah. Oh, you man. have to be critical thinking. You have to have a high order thinking. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of uh, techniques. So Abstract sense. thinking means you need to generate concept. Logical thinking, you have to construct a, a chain of reasoning for what you are doing yeah. from the problem to the solutions and justify that solutions. And, uh, and critical thinking means don't believe what people say it works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, second order, high order reasoning means you have to really think about what you are thinking. Yeah, retrospective to look at yourself. If you got a criticism, if you got a hit back by students, uh, uh, sorry, by reviewers, yeah. by, students, <laughs> by reviewers, and then you needed to know why you criticize me, yeah. what's wrong with that. So that we call the high order reasoning. Yeah. Wow, yeah. seems so difficult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> also what are your thoughts on work-life balance? Because research, you probably don't get much of that, right? You're just constantly working. I don't know how long yeah. your days are. Are they like nine hours? I used to work hours? seven days a week, uh, many for many years. Wow, how That's, many hours? I regret that <laughs> because how many my hours? four kids grow yeah. up without much my yeah. <laughs> company. Yeah, yeah, I feel really bad. <laughs> Yeah. Were you doing nine to five when you're doing seven days, or were you doing? Uh, I used to, to be ten, uh, ten hours. Uh, more than ten hours. Wow. Office seven o'clock. Off the office eight or nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah, twelve hours. Seven days. Yeah. Wow. Not, not, not seven. Not twelve hours in weekends. Yeah. But in work days, mostly yeah. like that. Wow, and why is that? Is it because you love what you're doing so much that like... No, no, no. No! <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> I'm, I'm a slow, slow learner. <laughs> My English is uh, terrible. <laughs> I have to check uh, a lot of times I uh, spend on learning English. <laughs> Checking on the dictionary and I find out uh, what that means. And read one time, I couldn't understand. Read another time, read three times. Finally, I know what that's what he's talking about. Oh, so okay. that's cost me a lot of time. Yeah. So I guess you're a slow learner in terms of English, but in terms of understanding the concepts, if imagine they were all in Chinese, easy for you to understand? Yeah. Yeah, I have to do these things in English. Yeah. 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 Oh. Otherwise, it's not, not easy to survive. Yeah. Wow, okay, and then so um, you used to regret that and so now what does your sort of like work schedule look like? I think uh, I spend uh, probably a little bit more time in exercise in future. Yeah. I used to run 10 kilometers every day in my undergraduate study. Wow. <laughs> and all for some years I swim in the UQ swimming pool yeah. every day. <laughs> But oh. not now. <laughs> I, think I would. I wish to pick up them back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And then tell me more about what you look for in PhD students. How do you know, like, if this is someone you can supervise? Because surely you must get so many requests and emails <laughs> every day from various yeah. countries. Yeah, almost every day. Yeah. Because some, um, I think. Uh, when I look at the pitch, these uh, emails they send to me, I look at a few things. The first thing is if they are in the same field. Yeah. Computer science, software engineering, electronic engineering, and also mathematics. Yeah. And uh, secondly, I look at uh, their GPA, if it's uh, above <laughs> or very good, <laughs> above average. How high? 
Does it need to be in your opinion? I think it's a six out of seven, at least. Yeah, that's quite low. I thought you were going to say like 6.5 at least. Oh yeah, yeah, the people got it probably yeah. like that. Yeah. Even some of them straight to seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean application because yeah. this is the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is about the research experiences. Mm. If they have published already, some of them already published a few good papers, and yeah. that paper is very interesting to me, and yeah. then I would consider. Thirdly, it's about these actual courses, background knowledge and the programming skills, yeah. such as the statistics, mathematics, and statistics, yeah. linear algebra, algorithm designing, those things, and uh, programming skills. And uh, after that, we look at uh, the personality <laughs> if they are proactive. Oh, yes. This is a uh, number one uh, characteristics. Yeah. Proactive actually means you know what you are doing. So not uh, be told yeah. you're doing whatever you do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you have to tell me what is research topic you are interested. Don't say, hey, whatever you tell me, I will yeah. do. Yeah, no. <laughs> as long as you supervise me, <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. Damn, okay, cool. Nice. Now we're going to talk about some of your career highlights. So I mm -hmm. saw that you were selected as the top 50 most powerful people in Australia on big data by the AFR in the 2015. How does it feel? <laughs> oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning. Actually, actually, I don't feel much about that because there are so many people much more excellent, <laughs> outstanding than me. Aww. Because uh, this kind of criteria, I think, is uh, from um, outside of yeah. our profession. Oh, yeah. yeah, more respected, I think, is from peer assessment. Ah. Yeah from the other universities, professors who are doing exactly the same thing as you are doing, I feel that would be worth more than yeah. this uh, popularity. <laughs> right? yeah, Research yeah, reputation probably much more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is what I really care about. <laughs> a peer assessment, a peer, um, uh, how, can I, how can I say, peer yeah. evaluation yeah, probably more much. important for us. Yeah, that's true. And also yeah. wondering, how did you, like, how were you able to teach at UQ? It's like a pretty prestigious school. So, like, how hard was it to, like, you know, apply to be professor at UQ? Uh, it is uh, difficult. Yeah. It, it is very difficult. Yeah. Very, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well so, so, yeah, because I've known so many professors, you know, like, or PhD students, yeah, later when they're yeah. like, they want to stay at UQ, but like they couldn't get a position. So it's yeah, a there is a few properties, uh, characteristics. Uh, first one, I think, is a leadership. Yeah. You have to demonstrate your leadership. And then people say, what is a leadership? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. That means your first author published the top journal paper, uh, conference yes. papers. And also you are the best paper in the conferences. And also yeah. you are a leader of a project. Yeah, and also you need to be, um, how can I say, involving in the uh, organization of conferences, uh, yeah. journal editing, journal editors. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, if in terms of teaching, you have to be an excellent yeah. teacher. Yeah. And then you have to demonstrate your excellency. That means you have to get a student uh, evaluation. <laughs> which yeah. Has a very high, right? yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> very difficult. Yeah. You have to have experiences on teaching. You said, I don't have a lecture job. How do I demonstrate my teaching? Then yeah. you say, okay, you have to be a tutor first. Yeah. Right? And then do the replacement teaching or casual teaching and then demonstrate on that. Yeah. yeah. You have to have your own ideas how to teach students. Yeah. How, what is learning? You must understand that well. Not just the general. Yeah. Because you are teaching a specific course, so yeah. what it, does that mean in learning of this course? How do you establish experiences of learning for your students? Yeah. You have to 
design, tutorial questions, solutions, practical solutions, exams, sample exams yeah. and the solutions, rubric of marking everything. Yeah, wow. And but demonstrated that excellency. <laughs> <laughs> But Shirley obviously achieved all those tick, 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 very good. And how you're need, yeah. you needed to spend the time. Yeah. Do a good time management. Yeah. Using 20% of your time to get 80% of yeah. your task finished. Yeah. yeah. Frank said a similar thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, so. yeah. So you've got to have a good time management and also driven by doing most important thing first yeah. and also care about the feedback from other people. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot just be alone. You have to talk to your tutors, talk to your students, get feedback from your supervisors and then say, how can I improve? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Continuous learning process. Yeah, be humble all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you yeah. get a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Now we're going to talk about some of your hobbies. So tell me more about your passion for teaching Chinese, because you oh. were principal of a Chinese school, yeah. Meow Meow, which is very cool. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, because I'm the first generation of Chinese in living in Australia, and also my kids are the first generation born in Australia. Nice, ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to lose the Chinese language. I think uh, that is my in initial motivation or whatever, because their grandfathers, their relatives come from China and uh, come to our house living together. I want them to be able to communicate with their grandparents. So in my house, in my family, my kids cannot speak English at <laughs> home. Yeah because they speak a lot of English in school, yeah. reading everything in English. So why not we bring up a little bit, <laughs> they yeah. speak Chinese at home. And then after that, uh, they can speak Chinese, but they cannot read. And then once they grow to five years old, uh, and yeah. then I got a chance to send them to Miao Miao. Yeah. <laughs> and then they said, uh, uh, why not you uh, be a, a principal? <laughs> I didn't uh, actually ask him for this job. Yeah. They, they said uh, Miao Miao is going to finish, stopped yeah. running. Stop running completely? Yeah, they told me that wow. in 2004. Yeah. And I was a little bit surprised. Uh, and they said, why? They said, oh, because there's another school, Chinese school will take over of oh. all the students or something like that. Because Miao Miao was the non-profit uh, uh, organization, oh. and then I was, uh, I said something like, uh, "Why they want to have another new school? This school is good enough." <laughs> they said, "Oh, we don't have a principal. You should be a principal." <laughs> something like that. Oh wow! And just I like that. I uh, started, yeah, and uh, just uh, lucky enough. That uh, year was my sabbatical leave. And, uh, <laughs> I had a little bit more luxury. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, all my weekends is gone. Yeah. For Miao Miao. Oh, I, that's yeah. True. Yeah, and how long were you principal for? So just probably six months, huh? Two years. Two yeah. years. Oh, that's yeah. actually quite a long time. Wow. What was the experience of being principal? Like, was it very hard? Like, uh, like was it like sort of like, ah, no, you know, this is no. similar to being a lecturer? I've got to carry I learned this. that all the time. Yeah. I think the uh, most important thing is I learned from Q Queensland, what's called the, the second language as a, other language as a second language is called TISO. Oh, oh TISO, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The TISO officers once told me, said, uh, volunteers means low quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was totally surprised. Yeah. Because every time when we have a training or meeting in Queensland Education Department, TISO, they call yeah. us, yeah. our teachers and uh, managers are there to yeah. have a meeting, training meeting. Yeah. And they give us money as well. Yeah. Sponsorship money. They always starting with, we are volunteers. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. And uh, after a few times, and uh, that officer get uh, really <laughs> angry. <laughs> stopped me and said this to me. Yeah. And suddenly I realized something. 
managing a school, you need to be very careful to follow the rules of uh, organization management. Not just I'm um, organizing the school by as a volunteer. You have yeah. to pay them well. You have to get money from everywhere, sponsorship. And I have to talk to those business people. Give me money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can pay school with the, the teacher higher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get everybody have a improve a chance in to improve their quality of teaching and the learning. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess kinda of similar to, you know, being a researcher and getting funding for research projects. <laughs> I tell you, you got to forget about who you are. Oh. I remember I went to McGregor school and uh, yeah. Uh, they said, I'm too busy, who you are? I said, yeah. I'm a principal of Miami Mia School. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And said, oh, sorry, we don't have time. Yeah. And I send an email, they don't reply. Oh, and no. then look under the door and say, oh, sorry, we finished the today. This is a four o'clock or something. <laughs> Many, multiple times. Yeah. And uh, at last, I was sitting on the straight uh, yeah. curb. <laughs> In the Magriga family <laughs> school, sitting there. Who am I? I'm a professor. And I'm waiting for the, <laughs> some admin officers yeah. there to talk to me. <laughs> well, well, so how, how did you, in the end, get them to talk to you? Did you just keep doing the same yeah, thing for yeah. like two years? Because uh, I believe they should rent their classroom to me. Yeah. Because uh, I'm doing good things for yeah. kids. And also Chinese language learning <laughs> is uh, one of the curriculum, actually. Yeah. I oh. just need to convince them. Yeah. But they are very busy. Yeah. I'm busy too, but yeah. I have to spend the time on yeah. this. And then they finally gave me a lot of uh, requirements. Yeah. Because oh, the hard. primary schools, the student job box got a lot of uh, private items yeah. Yeah. there. I have to getting a cover to cover the whole table yeah. in order to allow us to use. Yeah. I did it for 300 uh, clothes cover oh the, every God. table in the yeah. Madriga primary school. Oh, that is such a pain. Wow. Yeah. And how long did it take for you to be able to convince them from when you first... Did it take you like three months, two months? Uh, a few, months, a few uh, months. Yeah, I went back many, many times. Wow. And chatting with all possible decision makers. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! If pretty. you want to get something done, you got to forget who you are just yeah. to do it. And sort of just be humble, man. Like, you know, yeah, you're a youth it. professor and you're sitting on the curb, like... <laughs> get it done, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, wow. And also, what's your sort of tips for learning Chinese as an AVC? Oh, uh, yeah, they, they, are doing, they are learning very much. Yeah, what are some tips to improve Chinese for people who have grown up in Australia? Oh, okay. I think use it or lose it. <laughs> Simple as that. And English yeah, is probably reading, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're watching the interesting movie in yeah, dual did that. language. Uh, Watch yeah. so much Chinese dramas. Join the social media. <laughs> 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 they yeah. are to publish something in another language or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Join the club. There are so many. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. So we're nearly at the end of the podcast. Just a few more quick questions. Yeah. So the deep one, Shirley, what do you think the meaning of life is in your opinion? Ah, oh, I think I have, to, I have, to, if uh, any one of you or you ever thought about uh, this is your last day. Oh. I had that feeling a few times. Yeah. Yeah. A few times. Is it because you were like in like some sort of accident? No, it's a sick. <laughs> sick, yeah. Sickness. I was a very serious sick in country, in the countryside when yeah. I was young. Oh. Yeah, and also I needed to do the fighting all the time when I was a boy. Yeah. Uh, in the matter of in the countryside, I have a knife in my with me because <gasps> you know there is no law. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't fight, you will be beaten all the yeah. time. Yeah. So you have to pre be prepared uh, fighting to worst. death in a minute. Wow, and did you ever do that? Yeah. Wow, That's what won. I said. Uh, no, it's, I run out of it. That's why you do the 10K every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, 
you prepare to fight doesn't mean you really want to kill <laughs> somebody, right? Yeah. If it's good enough chat time, you just run away. Yeah. I run a few times uh, <laughs> because I'm faster runner. Yeah. <laughs> That's a life skill. But uh, it's hard to really expect uh, if you have a uh, next day. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, in countryside, you know, this is terribly hard. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And so, Shirley, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently about your life? Uh, what? Claire? If you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do oh, differently? Okay. Would you resign or quit or okay. go on sabbatical again? Yeah, <laughs> I think I thought of that a long time ago when I was in Sydney. Yeah. I was a senior lecturer in USW. Mm. And in the middle of the night, my wife asked me, say, Hey, <laughs> we bought a lottery. <laughs> what would we do tomorrow if we got a lottery? <laughs> Then I said, okay, let me think about it. We thought about a few minutes. I yes. said nothing. Then I said, I slowly, I said, we go a restaurant, have a dinner, don't even ask for price. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing we do. Yeah. And, uh, the second thing probably buy a good house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that uh, say, oh, I will do charity or I'll do yeah. something. I, I don't know I, uh, what I'm going to do. I know in terms of probability, it's almost impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so I never seriously thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of research money, I know what I'm doing. Oh, very good. Yeah, I will implement a system, designing and implement and enforce a system which can allow everyone can have their own private data lifetime. Oh, that is I wish. If you give me a few million dollars. Yeah, yeah. If anyone is listening to this and wants to sponsor <laughs> Shelly's project. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And the final question is, what is an ideal day in the life? What do you do in your perfect day? Okay, a perfect day, actually I'm doing that uh, in most of my time is uh, when you wake up, you think about what you are going to do or plan to do. Yeah. When you go to bed, you th spend a few minutes, think about what I have done. Yeah. Is that meaningful yeah. or can be better if tomorrow I'm doing such thing? Yeah. And then once you go to the life, uh, you to go to the office or start in your life, I don't have uh, anxiety. That yeah. is the best thing I have. Yeah. Because sometimes uh, it's very pressure. It's very hard yeah. for me, and uh, you got a lot of responsibility. Yeah. You know, my kids asked me, "What is the most hated, uh, or don't the <laughs> most disliked thing you have?" I said, uh, "Responsibility." Yeah. Because I'm so much responsible for so many things on yeah. me. I have to think about if I forgot something, did something wrong, or, or forgot to start uh, preparing something. Yeah. Because I'm a teacher, father, son, husband. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. So I don't want to have anxiety. Yeah. That's my wish. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Life is just simple like that. You just don't have to stress too Otherwise, much. Otherwise, very stressful. That's true. Cool. So we're pretty much at the end of the podcast. We're going to say bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.